Right. He says everything wrong. Ethan is on I chat GPT. I don't say Every same. Day Every day and fan. cannot pronounce GPT. <laughs> yes. Okay, same. I don't believe this guy is a fan. I don't. No, he is. I don't think he's a fan in good faith. I think he's a desperate. Okay, this is me. Okay, this is going to sound really bad faith about Jake, but this is what I think Jake is. Jake is attention seeking, lonely, desperate, and he did everything in bad faith to get Ethan's attention. He bought Teddy Fresh because he wanted Ethan's attention. He applied for a job because he wanted Ethan's attention. He made a hate video because he wanted Ethan's attention. I don't think he was ever actually a fan. I think he was only a fan because he thought he could use it for his own channel. So that might be bad faith for me, but that's the impression I'm getting. Like I love Ela and I love Teddy Fresh. And even when I've been very critical of Ethan, I have never unfollowed Ela or made a hate video about them because obviously like they're doing their own life and they're basically good people and they're just living their own life, right? Even through the Palestine like Israel stuff, I really empathize with Ethan because I understood how hard it must have been, though controversial. And as an Arab myself, I understand how complicated it is. Okay, who's been following the Jake Doolittle story? You guys know I, you know, the thing that's rough about me is that I love you and I still have strong opinions about you. So I love Ethan, still have strong opinions about him, but I do think the way that Jake reacted about Ethan was like so inappropriate. But also, can I tell you that there is something, and again, I'm not saying it's neurodivergency, but Jake has that sense of like justice -y energy I see in people. And I do think that he made a mistake by posting that video and he's obviously privated it now. So if you guys are not up to date, Jake has privated the video, which to be fair is probably best. It shouldn't have been posted in the first place, but also what does mean, sh what does should mean? I don't believe in objective morality. So I think we're all just sitting here forming our own values and then taking action based off of those perceived values, right? We all live in bubbles. So for Jake and his bubble and his value system, he felt like he was doing something really good. And I do believe he thought that. I just think it came from a bad place. And I don't think he knows that because you can have, again, the road to hell is paved in good intentions. The road to hell is paved in good intentions. So I do think that Jake was sort of painting his own path to hell with good intentions. I think Ethan does that pretty often, but also like humans are going to human and that's what we're going to do. So obviously like don't send death threats to anybody that's super not cool, but also welcome to the internet. And I hate, I'm not dismissing the threats. I think it's just a very serious part of being on the internet is you have to be very aware that there are unhinged people. If you are sending threats to someone, you're unhinged. Okay, like you're crazy, which by the way, like people advocate for violence against me on the internet. It's what it is. I get messages all the time about it. And all those people are considered unhinged to me. They're just super sick. Obviously, I think it takes a pretty sick individual to wish violence on people. But I also understand that like people also troll and people are just, I don't know, they're just typing stuff sometimes, you know? So we're going to go over a little bit of the H3 live show of them going over Jake's video just to see, you know, H3 was going to do, Ethan was going to do a review of this video and live during the stream, Jake privated the video. So it was like, Ethan said it perfectly. It's like when your little brother punches you and you go to punch him back and he's like, oh, I, I don't, I don't want to. And I think that that happens a lot on the internet. And I do think smaller creators need to own up to whether or not they're adult enough to handle the backlash. And if you're not, like maybe this game isn't for you. It's so funny too, how many like, he's a pretty medium sized channel. I mean, Jake has like 400,000 subscribers, right? He gets about 100,000 views a video sometimes. Like he has a pretty good presence on the internet. He, you know, but he also comes off as kind of like an unhinged fan a little bit, which maybe he's just like neurodivergency. Maybe he's so socially awkward. Maybe he's inappropriate. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Like I think I've been a young person who's super awkward with people. So maybe it's all of those things. There's just so many things it could be that could lead a person to making this decision. But ultimately, I do think it was the wrong one. And I think Ethan has the right to respond to it if he wants to. And he obviously chose to do that. Tara's here. Just because you like someone doesn't mean you're supposed to be a yes man for them. Criticism is important. Well, also, it's also remember that this channel is about philosophy and about nuance. And so ultimately, we all have our own biases and prejudice. I don't think anyone exists on the planet without prejudice and bias. I don't think anyone exists on this planet without some sort of wound or trauma or dysfunction that leads us down certain reactions, impulses, bad mistakes. So I'm all about forgiveness and moving forward. 
but also it takes like a sense of, you know, acknowledgement too, to know that a person understands like what happened, but also it's subjective based off of our perception. So obviously um, there's going to be a little bit of that where I don't think you need to listen to everyone who criticizes you. I think you need to be open to somebody who can see you and then give you feedback. But I also think you have to be able to see that person like understand why they did what they did instead of projecting your own values onto them and then judging them through your own values, right? You can't judge a Muslim the way you would a Catholic. They have different rules. You wouldn't judge people in different countries based off of how Americans work. Like they're different people. Like everyone has different rules. And so you try to, you know, see where they're coming from. So obviously Jake is coming from a place where he felt personally wounded and his values felt like I need to stand up for people. And people were somewhat on his side in small numbers. And I think that that is what category of person he's in. If you're on Jake's side, you fit into that category of person and that's your bubble. So obviously me, Papa Gut, lots of Ethan fans all agreed that like that video was kind of unhinged and Jake was super inappropriate. But Jake is only inappropriate because it doesn't coincide with our values. It doesn't work with how we perceive reality. And so for Jake and the few people that supported him, and if you're on Jake's side, you are saying, I am like Jake. And I am saying, I am not like Jake. You know, we're actually signaling to one another, I am not like you. And because I'm not like you, I cannot understand why you did X or I do understand why you did X, or I'm going to imply you did X with malicious intent, right? So remember when we're observing people on the internet, even Ethan, who I adore, you know, or even Abba and Preach, who I adore, and I'm friends with Abba, right? Like I watch them go at it and they have their battles and I'm trying to say, okay, so how is Ethan judging Abba and Preach and how's Abba and Preach judging Ethan? And we're all judging each other through our perceptions of values and reality. And everyone's a good and, and well-intentioned person, right? Like people are well-intentioned, you know, except for the crazy ones or the malicious ones. But I don't think that's exactly what we're dealing with here. I think we're dealing with a lot of people with different values and everyone's going to take a side because they're like, I'm more like this person or I understand this person's perspective. And so there's a little bit of um, who's actually morally superior. It's not really about that because morals are personal. Morals are your own, that's what they are. They're your own personal understanding of value. You know, if you want to talk about societal ethics, if you want to talk about what's appropriate as a society, we can have that conversation. But that's not really what Jake's video was about, was it? It was about morals. He was attacking Ethan's morals. And I think he didn't have a ground to stand on. You know, I think he made the mistake of thinking that this this was a an objective you know what I mean? An objective take. And it just wasn't. But if you find yourself identifying with Jake, you need to now own that you are in that bubble, like that that category of person. And if you more or less understood Ethan's perspective, that means you're probably more like Ethan. I'm much more like Ethan than Jake, Avi, right? Like I had a very similar reaction to my possible lupus diagnosis only to realize it's fibromyalgia. Obviously, it was relatable, but it wasn't relatable to Jake. So he didn't understand it. And because it wasn't relatable, he demonized and villainized Ethan. And that is the mistake I think well-intentioned people make is we think so ill of people because we do not see them, but we think it's a them issue when it's an us issue. If you have a problem with someone, it's probably a you issue. Your values, your morals, your projection, you're assuming they're like you. And when I have a problem with someone, it's because of my values. I'll admit that full on. When I have a problem with someone, it's because of my own values. So that's why I say you do you, but I'm open with boundaries. You do you, but the only reason I would have a problem with you is if you went against what I deem inappropriate, which is my values. So instead of saying you need to be like me, I say you do you, but I'm gonna need to take a step back. Or we can be friends or associates, or I can like you from a distance, but I don't wanna like condone your behavior, or I wanna make it clear I don't condone it, even though as a whole, I like the person. Ethan does plenty of things I don't condone, but I like Ethan as a whole as a person. I don't always agree with his take. Sometimes I think he is like very inappropriate, but I ultimately know Ethan's a well-intentioned person. You know what I mean? And I'm sure Jake is too. I just see less of Jake and I'm less like him. So I'm less likely to feel very sympathetic to his position, though I can understand where he's coming from. I just think that he miscalculated and obviously he couldn't handle it. 
right? He made a big accusation, honestly, a very dishonest accusation. And we're going to cover it today by watching Ethan talk about it. Like, it was very inappropriate, guys. Leading up to this video, I was a huge fan of the H3 podcast when I was at my sickest. So leading up to this, he was a huge fan. Right. The minute I brushed across something he cares about a little bit, brushed upon it, now he's he's done. All bets are off. I'm exposing him. Too far. <clears throat> the podcast was always something that I could watch to make me feel less alone. I even remember saving up money from my first job ever to buy multiple Teddy Fresh items. More recently, I was on the podcast. I also have the goal of refreshing my wardrobe and getting all new Teddy Fresh stuff. I love Teddy Fresh. I don't have currently any right now, but I would love to refresh my wardrobe and get some Teddy Fresh breath. It's so good. I love Ela. I follow her on Instagram. She's a fashion icon. Speaking to Ethan about an unrelated subject, I left VidCon to attend their most recent live show, and I am also friendly with a few of their crew members. But I saw a few very concerning right. things when it comes to Ethan <laughs> Klein's lupus journey. And as someone who's been sick his entire life, I felt like I needed to make this video. Not only have I dealt with chronic illness, but I run a nonprofit where I support people financially who are sick and struggling. Okay, dude, like, whatever. I probably gave more money during mm -hmm. this whole thing than you have. I mean, that doesn't take... But no, if he's legitimately no doing is. that... That's... Okay, so if you guys don't watch H3H3, H3, Dan is Ethan's Jiminy Cricket, right? Dan, Dan's job is to slow Ethan down, okay? And then the other crew, they can do that too, but Dan is Ethan's Jiminy Cricket, okay? So see how he made like a joke about like, I give more money? It's not a joke. He made a statement that was petty. I give more money. Okay, to be fair, Jake does come off super self-righteous about his his nonprofit. So, okay. But again, I distrust people who are like, I help people for a living. I was like, do you? Because I don't believe in altruism, right? So like, yes, we all help people. But when you brag about helping people, there's something about that that always raises a red flag to me. But Dan's job is to keep Ethan sort of like centered, right? That's what Dan's job is. And he does a really good job at it. So My man. point, you're right. you're right. It's petty. My point is <laughs> So he admits it. It's petty. Good. We're all on the same page. I'm not going to moralize pettiness. Sometimes I think it's appropriate. Is <laughs> though that he's saying I stole money. Yeah. Right, which yeah, I mean, the the core of the accusation is nonsense. I mean, so. I, the work he's doing is good. Yeah. As a viewer, but um Gabe, I kind of disagree with you. You said, I also think it's stupid that this is happening only because Ethan can be targeted as a YouTuber. If people viewed him as a comedian like Bobby Lee, this would never happen. Comedians get canceled too. People try to hold um, comedians to a standard as well. So I, I think it happens to a lot of people. Let's go, Adam. Thank you so much. Uh, Super Chat, Teddy Fresh Fund. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Here we go, Ela. I'm coming. I love Teddy Fresh. I'm a big fan. So I'm, I, yeah, I can't wait to get some more, some more, especially I just love a good sweat set, you know? Yeah. Or of the podcast, if I were to stand back and watch Ethan lie, saying certain things about him. Lie? Like, I feel like this is genuinely, I think this might be defamation. Mm -hmm. to say I'm lying about it illness to me. I, I wonder if it could have been now obviously I hope they don't go after Jake because I do think he's a little unhinged like he might be somewhat mentally unwell to an extent because I do I can't tell if he's mentally unwell or if he's just like really putting way too much stake in this but Ethan's literally going to just prove very quickly that he never lied you saw in my original video you saw in Papa Gut's reaction like it's obvious Ethan isn't literally lying and so to say that Ethan is lying as if he's being malicious, as if he's twirling his mustache is, is just like so it, it's very weird. And so it's either like a mental illness or it's a sense of justice that's went too far or he's not understanding the social context is a little he's making it weird, you know, to make money. I think yeah. that might be actual might be. He would have to know that it's not true. And I, but he does. He's such a fan of the show. <laughs> as one of your haters who also, was there, watching there, there's parts where he omits certain pieces where i'm making it clear right go ahead db sorry no no it's fine i was gonna say as i was watching one of your haters react to this and as they said it's completely different if you said i have this disease i need money <laughs> and which you did not do they were defending right. you right. Yeah, right it's completely different right. Well, you guys will see when he yeah. Even people who don't like love Ethan were like, um, this is like this isn't what's happening. Look again on Twitch, on YouTube, people donate to millionaires all the time. 
If you have the, like, Ethan wasn't collecting money for his lupus fund. You know what I mean? Guess that part. He, I think he includes all donations we got. <laughs> just period, but let's see his health that are just straight up misinformation, then I would be doing a disservice to an entire community. My goal in making this video is not to do anything but address what I've seen from Ethan and his behavior. Ethan Klein claimed to have lupus, made money off of it, and then admitted that he made everything up and self-diagnosed himself. Okay, this that's crazy. This is such crazy. a vile fucked up thing to say. <laughs> that's crazy. And you know what, dude? What? For you to sit there and say... To say it like that is so far from actual reality. Dude, it's just mean. Yeah. And frankly... <laughs> I felt like during that whole journey, I was tr I was being really vulnerable. I was opening up my med every medical detail, mm -hmm. and and he was sharing emails, and he was being transparent. I again, I was, I was, I don't watch each three all the time anymore. I used to watch it like religiously, but again, even I get burnt out on some of their like bubble takes because I don't come from the same bubble, but. I was the lupus journey was so relatable just because like you guys watched my I cried on stream multiple times because I literally thought like the fibromyalgia was so bad that I was like I'm dying and look some people like don't know how to handle people going through a diagnosis especially as an adult especially when you're a parent or have responsibilities like Ethan is and so I, I just found it so much more relatable watching Ethan's journey because I was like yeah, I like literally cried to you guys how many times when I was getting diagnosed and I thought it was lupus and I was like, oh my God. And I was just like in so much pain and you guys were so supportive and wonderful. I got a ton of unsolicited medical advice, which eventually I had to be like, hey, stop sending me medical advice because it's getting exhausting. I just want to trust my doctors. And my doctors had every reason to believe it was lupus. I had almost all of the symptoms, except I hadn't gone to a rheumatologist. Once I went to a rheumatologist, he's like, hey, like you don't have the testing for it. So Again, like it's very, it's just so relatable to have watched it. And again, I literally have birth control and think I'm pregnant every month. And I always think I have cancer because I have lumps in my breast that I have to get mammogrammed every couple of years. I'm like, it's cancer. Even though they're like, Brittany, it's not cancer. I'm like, but it could be cancer. And they're like, yes, it could be cancer. And I lose my hair and I get stressed and I have a rash. And so I'm always like, do you get what I'm saying? It's just when you're in this category of person, it feels very intense. And then you're a comedian or you're joking on top of it. I joke about things all the time. People are also very neurodivergent, my audience, and they sometimes make, take me too literally. And I'm neurodivergent, so sometimes I take people too literally. And then we don't know when people are joking and we don't know when people are just being funny. And, you know, there's so much that goes into the misunderstanding of somebody. And it usually is a you thing because you're the one misunderstanding. You know what I mean? Which is why like clarifying is so important. And look, that means I'm the one misunderstanding or I'm the one not radically accepting everyone has their own journey and everyone's going to have their own reaction to the same thing. Assuming everyone is like us is always going to be the first mistake we're making, right? Because I, I genuinely was going through a medical issue. People that watch the show know I saw a hematologist. I saw a rheumatologist. I went to my, my, uh, Regular doctor, I was doing blood tests like every week for months, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I'm still I'm still getting. Ch Wait, B says that's the hard part uh, as an now old fan uh, of Jake's. Are you saying? But he was always talking about money and monetizing his second channel and how hard it was. And I just feel like he's projecting his own personal struggles. You know what amazes me? How channels with much more like popularity than me can't make it. I make a decent middle class income. If you're making at least 50K a year, what are you complaining about? You know what? If you're a YouTuber, I know that's not a lot of money, but what an honor to make at least 50K a year. Like there's no way with 400,000 subscribers, he's not making at least 50K a year. So what, like how much more do you want, bro? And if you're not making enough money, like that's just business. Like, again, maybe I'm just a small channel and I'm sitting here like, hey, I'm making like pretty good money. I'm pretty grateful for what I make. Now, of course, a lot of it is Patreon. Thank you so much for funding the channel. But I don't get why Jake has 400,000 subscribers and is like complaining about money. You know what I mean? But apparently people who make 180K are complaining about money. I don't want to take that away from you. I could complain about money too, but there's a part of you that just needs to learn how to be grateful as well, right? And his partner works in STEM. Girl, sometimes I wonder what it is like with people, like again, complaining about money, like when the world is struggling out here, is as a YouTuber, it feels a little like, OK, like we're not rich YouTubers, but like you can't be poor either. There's no way Jake is poor. And if he's poor, why is he like, how is he managing his money? You know what I mean? There's no way he's poor. If he is, he's doing something wrong. Like Boogie. 
Boogie has 4 million subscribers and it's his fault he's poor because he refuses to do the work, right? Like there's no way, like people complaining about money when you have viewers and popularity, what's happening? You know what I mean? Medical bills are probably expensive. I could see that being absolutely true. Obviously I moved to Europe, so I'm, you know, what I paid $16,000 out of my pocket last year for my diagnosis process for my, um, for my fibro and everything. Yeah, I went into debt trying to get a diagnosis. Absolutely, I get it. Absolutely. So I'm not saying it's perfect, but I'm saying like, again, he's not the only one struggling. Everybody is struggling. So the idea of like acting like he's special, again, why Why do people pretend there's like, we're all struggling. Like 80% of Americans have like debt. So I don't know why Jake would feel valid. Like, he, you know what I mean? Like, get a second. I have three jobs. Like, get a job. Or like, welcome to the world of, str it just feels disingenuous to, to, act like you know what i mean it just feels icky to me i guess i don't know checked up by the way i don't know if you know this jake maybe you can tell me if this if this is okay or not but i did a, a stool sample i shit in a fucking bucket bro and they found some elevated thing for autoimmune mm. so i have to go back i think in a week or two to do another shit test and if it is positive jake they have to do a colonoscopy to see oof colonoscopy is rough if I have irritable bowel disease. Is that okay, Jake? You fucking, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is, see, this is why I do like Ethan's personality because like I'm very similar when I'm being petty. I'm like, oh my God, like I am, when I'm being petty, absolutely. When I'm being like my higher zen self, okay, when I'm being like my five self, if you guys don't know, I have this like introspection level system, links in the description. But when I'm being like a five, sure, bro, I'm zenning out and humans are gonna human. But when I'm being petty, especially as a YouTuber, like, what did you say? Like, what did you say? Like, and again, I understand why Ethan's being petty, but he does go hard on Jake. <laughs> How dare you? How? But to be fair, Jake literally called him a liar. So. Dare you. <laughs> uh, uh, it... How dare you? <laughs> Come on, man. Cam Cam, you've had seven colonoscopies. Holy shit. Holy shit. Damn, that's gotta be a record, bro. As I'm recording this, yesterday I posted a teaser to this video and I've received more backlash than I've gotten in a very long time. So much so that's- Again, the, his reaction is it's not me, it's them. Right, I mean, maybe I wonder why. But I don't know. Sometimes there's obvious haters, but if you read the comments, most of the people were just trying to be like, no, you don't understand. Yeah. The whole, this is what actually happened. And yeah. providing lots of information. Yeah, the feedback. I mean, some people went pretty rough on Jake. I mean, Ethan's doing it now. I think a lot of us went pretty rough on him. And again, if you're in the category of like thinking Jake like overdid it and Ethan was fine, then you're just like that kind of person. If you think Jake was in the right, then you're that kind of person. Cool. That's what it is. It's not that deep, right? Back on that teaser post wasn't like, oh, fuck you for coming after Ethan. It, it was no. like. Right. They were, they were being fairly charitable. Like Jake isn't an evil person. He's just a person, you know? ...that this must be some kind of misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. At least the top ones that I, that I saw were. Maybe um, there was some more vicious hate in there. Yeah, so bro, like, hold on. And I'm trying to see if he left up that reel. Oh, it looks like he removed that too. But this was all up to today. Everything was up. Delete. Somebody from the H3 crew direct messaged me and called me insane for thinking this. I also want it to be known that I understand the other side. Not true. I mean, <laughs> dramatic. I mean, yeah. he said that's crazy. Right. That's insane. He wasn't like. See how he twisted the words? He like twisted AB's words. AB messaged him, if you guys don't know, and just said, hey, um, I think your teaser's a clickbait. So Jake puts out teasers for his videos. And AB saw it and goes, hey, just so you know, like, I assume this is clickbait. And Jake goes, no, this isn't clickbait. I'm doing it for all the women with lupus. I'm doing it to stand up to Ethan, like super virtue signally. And AB was like, hey, bro, this is going to come off pretty insane. And then Jake twisted that into saying, see, AB called me insane. No. Well, now you're kind of insane. But we were saying it was going to come off insane. And now that you're doubling down, you do look insane. Which is, look, I'm mentally ill and in remission and in maintenance mode. I understand neurodivergent, sense of justice, absolutely. It doesn't make you right. 
Feelings are valid because they're happening. Doesn't mean they're within reason. It's okay to have those feelings. It's okay to move through those feelings. It's okay to ask yourself, why am I having them? Jake made the mistake of assuming that his sense of justice was within reason, right? Just remember that people's sense of justice also justifies genocide. People's sense of justice also justifies putting people on death row who are innocent. People's sense of justice is biased and within their own reality, people's sense of justice might actually be the cruelest display of human behavior. So remember, like when you're feeling that sense of justice, make sure you really understand why it's happening because you might just be in your own little perception and the perception might be off. Dude, you're insane. You're, insane. you're mentally ill, dude. Mm. Right. I was like, that's insane. insane. If, if it wasn't work related, trust me, I would want to say a lot more than that. But yeah. <laughs> Love you, buddy. Love you too. <laughs> Side of things. I get that dealing with health problems can be a very scary time in someone's life. But when the health problems that Ethan Klein is talking about are completely self diagnosed with zero symptoms, you have. How can you say that? Why? I mean, that's not. So many doctors. Why that's would just you say that? All that Ethan was saying is that he has zero symptoms for lupus. Technically, I think that's what Ethan was saying. And I think Jake heard that as like no symptoms at all. But obviously that's not true. There were symptoms. They just, I think Ethan did say at some point um, for the, his side channel that he didn't have any lupus symptoms, which except the rash and the rash wasn't quite. So I, you know, I think that's where Jake was misspeaking. Really not true. And yeah, you had symptoms. Yeah. Why, why were Visible. you getting help? I still have a rash on my face. Yeah, off. just watch all of them. By the way, my rash goes from like the head to the toes and it like I have it um, even now I get it still. I just think the dermatologist thinks it's an allergy to heat or even cold, like extreme weather and my body like panics and rashes. But like I didn't because it wasn't life threatening. I stopped going to the doctor because like no one has money to pay for that. But like. <laughs> But like it is, you know, Ethan probably he could have eczema. He could have a lot of things. It's just like, thank God he has the money to see, right? Episodes from last <laughs> year, Ethan is like. I look like a raccoon. Mm. My and yes, I agree. Luna says, I mean, most people self-diagnose even a little. We all do it. Oh, I think it's the flu. I think it's the cold. You don't know. We're just like, yeah, I think it's the cold. I think it's the flu. I think it's this. I think of this. You know what I mean? Like everyone does that. Oh, I think I have this. I think I have depression. I think I have anxiety. Unless you get it checked and it's on your paperwork. And what about doctors who misdiagnose you? What about doctors who, you know, just do one test or no test? Or doctors who often tell women, nothing is wrong with you. You seem fine. And then you find out something is wrong with them. You know what I mean? So again, mm, 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 mm. eyes are all... Like, we're like less than a minute into this and it's that's what i was saying yeah. that's what happened to us we didn't make it past two minutes like we like couldn't already <laughs> like wrong about everything oh i'm being told that's exactly but how can exactly i faith. assume it's anything but bad faith because the whole context of everything i'm talking about is going over the medical uh tests that were ordered by my doctors mm -hmm. like also, the whole like context is in that it's your show and you share everything about yourself. So mm -hmm. you're going through this journey of figuring out what's going on and you're organically talking about your life. Like yeah. it's not anything more than that. And by the way, there's... I do similar things and some people just fucking hate it, bro. Like some people just hate it. And I think that's your business. Like keep it to yourself, move on with your life. I just think people are so envious and jealous and miserable that they can't let Ethan just live his fucking life or let me live my fucking life. But at the same time, have your strong opinions if you want. But like, don't get mad when Ethan defends himself or don't get mad when I dismiss you. I tend to dismiss people and be like, I'm not talking to that crazy person. But Ethan loves to engage, which fair. But I just like write people off as crazy because I'm just like, that's an unhinged take. I'm not engaging with that. Like, that's crazy. Like, I just think it's silly. But people are just miserable. They don't understand you. They don't see where you're coming from. If you think Ethan is a bad person, don't watch him. Move on with your life, bros. Or make videos about him and expect him to reply to him. That reply to you. That was the problem. Is Jake had the audacity to make a fucking video and then be shocked that Ethan replied to it? How could you make a video about someone and then get upset they replied to it? That's insane. That's an insane take, right? It's like, yeah, you can, it's a public forum, my bros. It's a public fucking forum. You know what I mean? Crazy take. There's tons of people are like, I have lupus and it's nice to see people talking openly about mm -hmm. this. But somehow I guess Jake thinks I was attacking everyone with lupus, stealing lupus glory. Yeah. <laughs> I said no pickles. What a weird fucking thing, man. You have to ask yourself, 
Why is he doing this? What? That's what I ask about you. Why? <laughs> That's what I have been asking myself about you. Why yeah. have you done this? And why have you left it up this whole time? Like, why? We, I didn't, you know, it didn't have to be like this. I think the uh, upbeat music's a nice ch touch, so. Mm. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> yeah. All right, how it all started, let's see. Can I give you, real quick? Yeah. I just want to say this before I forget, because I'm guessing this is exactly how it's going to play out. He posted that story yesterday, so that when we do react to it, now he's going to make his follow-up. I even, I even... Uh, Ribbit says, especially knowing how unhinged the H3 audience can be. Look, all large audiences have an unhinged faction of them. I just think that's reality. I like it, that's just how it goes. Um, obviously, my audience doesn't because my audience is based. But obviously, some audiences have yes, an unhinged faction. So I do think it's important. And Ethan does say it. Don't send threats. Don't do that. That's crazy. But I think people need to say that more to their larger audiences, even though knowing like the unhinged people will still do it. So again, we want to like promote some self-awareness here from the content creator's position as well. And so again, it's like there's something to be said about um, understanding that when you make a video about someone, you're inviting their audience into your life. Like I literally avoid making certain content videos about people because I don't want to interact with their audiences. You can make that decision if you want to make it. I just like, again, I'm very open with boundaries and I know my boundaries. And that's why I just don't talk about certain people or I talk about them less or I don't reply to that because I just don't want to deal with their toxic audience, you know, and that's just the reality. So I, I said this, he still talked about it <laughs> and then I privated it and he still talked about it. Bro, you literally. So and brings up a really interesting point that I've, you know, always had a struggle with. It says people have all sorts of weird takes about this. They sometimes think it's wrong for bigger content creators to ever respond to smaller ones because of dogpiling. Can I be real? Obviously, yes. If you're not prepared to ever handle it, it's very intense. I've had moments like that in my life where I couldn't handle a bigger content creator coming at me and I got overwhelmed and deleted my posts. But I'm ready now, bitch. Can a bigger content creator talk about me? Thank you. <laughs> You just grow into it. And that's why I say maybe Jake isn't ready to be in the big leagues because the big leagues are intense. People write articles about you. People talk about you. It, it's very intense. And I wasn't always ready for it. So obviously, like, Papa Bless, love and sympathy to you if you're not ready to handle it. But that's it. That's the responsibility you're taking on. It's not perfect. It's not a fair world. It never was. We're just evolved animals on a planet. We were never guaranteed a fair share in anything in life. That's a dream. I love that dream for you, but it's silly, okay? So, like, the reality of online content creation is a lot of misrepresentation, misconstruing, m like a lot of hate comments and complicated, you know, relationships with bigger content creators and smaller ones and reputations. And there's, that's just the reality of the online space. You don't like it, get a different job, my, my homies, or change the way that you feel like we're interacting and interact better. But Jake can't swing, lie about Ethan, even though I don't think he thinks he's lying, which is, I think is important to realize. I don't think Jake thinks he's lying. I think Jake thinks he's being honest and, and thinks that Ethan is lying. So he thinks he's telling the truth. But you can't do that and then be confused because he's contributing to the space. By making that kind of content, we're all contributing to the space. You can't contribute to the space and defame somebody or, or talk ill of somebody you know, myself included, I can't contribute and then be like, oh, why is this this way? Because we're all contributing to the way that it is. You know what I mean? Yes. Aaron says Jake's basically saying you wouldn't hit a guy with glasses, would you? Ex one thousand. One fucking thousand percent, bro. Exactly. You proved said I'm lying about a chronic illness knowingly to make money. Yeah. Yeah. You expect me? I have every fucking right in the world, mm -hmm. as does anyone accuse of such things to de defend myself and you're a fucking fool you know what's interesting is like i don't give people the light of day if i think you're unhinged and you're making a horrible take i just ignore it but ethan ethan defends himself and one day if it's a big enough uh thing i might need to do that but ethan is giving jake a lot of publicity right now this is a time for jake to shine he should go live he should make a response he should you know if he really feels like he's within reason he should explain it but if he's genuinely hurting genuinely can't handle what's going on he should also say that hey i actually can't handle this i shouldn't have spoken up i don't think i'm prepared to handle this and it is what it is but ethan still has the right to defend himself
All right, how it all started. On June 16th, 2023, Ethan live streamed an episode of his show, The H3 Podcast. The episode was going fine until Ethan said something unexpected. This morning, it was going fine until Ethan started opening up, being vulnerable about his, his scary mm -hmm. medical and issue. Lying. Mm -hmm. By the way, that morning, I was legit really anxious. And that's why I brought it up because I was like, I'm. I have to be true to myself and talk about this because it's so much on my mind and I want to share it. Mm -hmm. I thought I had cancer for sure, I'm not gonna lie. This morning, what happened yeah. this morning? My white blood cells and platelet counts were high. So my doctor was like, it's probably, it's probably nothing, but I can send you to a hematologist. Well, I wasn't super worried, but then I went to the hematologist and we did a whole bunch of tests. And so like- This man literally said I did it without any doctors, but what yeah, the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, just self-diagnosed with no symptoms. You're, you're showing me talking about talking to a hematologist. Like, here's one. Tripe taste. A lot of this stuff has to do with, like, leukemia. Uh. Saying that an elevated tripe taste relates- Now he's a doctor! <laughs> <laughs> after making fun- after shitting on me for- Look, we all have this tendency on the internet to read books and think we know what's going on, especially in, like, psychology bubbles or true crime bubbles, okay? I get it. But yeah, I think he's being silly here right now because Ethan is Ethan. Ethan's not talking as a doctor. I'm not talking in a, as an expert. You guys know the reason I feel like this happens to me a lot, right? I always say I'm just a person living her life who's learned some things about herself, but I'm not an expert in anything but myself. And people are always like, Brittany thinks she's a therapist. Brittany thinks she's an expert in trauma. Brittany thinks this. I don't think that. You think that and you're projecting it onto me. Just like Jake is doing this to Ethan. Ethan isn't claiming to be a doctor. He's just claiming to be Ethan and he's going through something and he's sharing it. Like, what does he want Ethan to do? And so like Jake is in his own way trying to go at Ethan as if he's the doctor. It's so interesting how hum humans are going to human, as we say on this channel. Humans are going to human and Jake be humaning. Ethan was already humaning, but Jake be humaning. Self-diagnosing, as he says. Now this dude is going to come here and preach to me about what these medical things mean. And by the way, where'd you learn these? Medical school? No, you learned them on Google, you <laughs> fucking hypocrite loser. Yeah, like where you did Google he even learn this stuff? What? States that he went to check on his cholesterol levels and then seemingly read his own lab results. And <laughs> Why are you saying it like that? He's saying it like he knows you're lying. Why are I, you saying it like that? I said in the video he showed, I talked to my doctor. Why is it like he seemingly talked to a doctor <laughs> and he allegedly read this and it's like, what? what and he saw a doctor and he's reading the results. Every Every possible mm -hmm. turn and chance, he paint, paints me in the most bad faith. Yeah. And right. Right. <laughs> Listen, crazy. you know my policy on this shit. Like, I, I address it head on. And this is probably one of the most fucked up things anyone's accused me of. And there's been a lot. <laughs> I clearly said in the clip you showed, I talked to my doctor. He recommended if I wanted to see a hematologist, I could. I went to the hematologist that showed other elevated uh, attributes. Mm -hmm. And self-diagnosed himself based off of Google searches. Motherfucker! You didn't even show that! Did not happen. God, what? <laughs> did not happen. What? Where? Where did that happen? What is wrong with you? Like, he never did that. Ethan never did it. Even in Jake's own video. Like, I don't know how Jake made that video and didn't understand his own video proves himself wrong. Like, that's the part that I'm so confused at. Like, I, I, if Jake wants to talk, I'll talk to you, Jake. I will talk it through with you in private, and I will explain to you how your own video literally proved you wrong. Like, your premise was proved wrong by your own video. All you did was show clips of Ethan literally saying, could be lupus. I think I have lupus. The doctors think it might be lupus. All of those things were, you know, a part of reality. And I just don't think, like, Jake maybe has somebody who can explain it to him. And I do think people just hate Ethan so much that they're running with it. But I literally, I don't understand how Jake doesn't understand his own video. His own video proved that Ethan was in, that Ethan was just being a person. Ethan never lied. So it's just like, it's very strange. You fucking <laughs> idiot, dude. God. I, I think that this dude should, <laughs> I think he should retire. It is, yeah. I, I hate to tell someone don't pursue their dreams, but this is such a fucking miss. Don't pursue <laughs> your dreams. Insane. This is a huge miss. You know, Discord Discord has a, if you guys want to join our Discord, supports the content, 
has its own um, chat I read from and it said, um, I'm surprised Ethan cares enough to reply. I think it's because it is so unhinged. You know what I mean? Isaac from YouTube chat says he just wanted the attention. I think that's probably true. Jake feels desperate to me. He feels desperate for the views. Um, I don't know why. He has a really good sized channel. He could, he doesn't need to ride, the, like he doesn't need, he could just do his own thing. So it's kind of weird that he's doing this or making this decision. I would never Give say up that, on your dreams. I would never say that. Don't pursue your dreams. <laughs> Go to what sleep on your dreams. You to talk about it's, it. time, it's time to find a new career path. I, I think this is... This uh, is your last video. Go to, go to Matt. Look, to be empathetic to Jake, I I get it. Just meditate on it, my bro. Meditate on it. Call literally like DM me on Discord, bro. I will get you through this. The point is, this is you're not an evil person. You're not an awful person. You made a mistake. Big deal. Let's move on from it, right? Apologize. Understand why you're apologizing. That might take a bit. Meditate on it. This isn't the end all be all. Jake's not a horrible person, just a person. That's cool. I mean, yeah, he yeah, really has a passion for it. Thank you. Please yeah. be a doctor. Go follow your passion. Because at least never it, stop. What's Ethan here never claimed to be a doctor. Because you'll see he goes on Quite to the that contrary. too. <laughs> Quite the contrary. Yeah. <laughs> more recent test result that came in. This test is the one that Ethan runs with throughout this entire journey. My uh, right. Anna Titer. This is um, also titer. like leukemia and lupus and shit. First, Anna Titer makes no sense. The part that Ethan calls oh Anna stands for anti-nuclear antibodies. It's an act. You Googled that, you oh fucking moron. Oh my God. Okay. Of course you just Googled uh, excuse that. Excuse me. Nerd this alert. This is yeah. not. Don't this is common too. I didn't know what an Anna was. An Anna A. What? An N A N A. Fuck. I didn't know what that was until I was told my doctor like we have to get an A N A. And I was like, what is that? And I was like, what is that? I don't know. Why would I know what that is? You know what I mean? Why would I eat? Like, why would I even know what these things are until someone like gave me the idea or told me like, hey, I, you know, it's just, you know. Dork. This is not a medical school podcast. Four this eyes. Is a person reading his results. A person who does, the did first not. I've ever heard that in my life. You never claim to know exactly what it is or how to say <laughs> it or what it stands for. Like what the hell? Ethan... Also, you watch the show, yes. my dude. Yes. Have you? Do you know Ethan? That's what I'm saying. Do you know Ethan? That's what I said. I'm not making an excuse for Ethan. I'm just not holding him to my own values and standards. I'm meeting Ethan where he's at and I'm holding Ethan to his own standard. Ethan isn't doing very Ethan things. I just don't understand. You know what I mean? Right. He says everything wrong. Ethan is on I chat like GPT. I don't Every same. Every day and fan. cannot pronounce GPT. <laughs> yes. Okay, same. I, mean, I don't believe this guy is a fan. I don't. No, he is. I don't think he's a fan in good faith. I think he's a desperate. Okay, this is me. Okay, this is going to sound really bad faith about Jake, but this is what I think Jake is. Jake is attention seeking, lonely, desperate, and he did everything in bad faith to get Ethan's attention. He bought Teddy Fresh because he wanted Ethan's attention. He applied for a job because he wanted Ethan's attention. He made a hate video because he wanted Ethan's attention. I don't think he was ever actually a fan. I think he was only a fan because he thought he could use it for his own channel. So that might be bad faith for me, but that's the impression I'm getting. Like I love Ela and I love Teddy Fresh. And even when I've been very critical of Ethan, I have never unfollowed Ela or made a hate video about them because obviously like they're doing their own life and they're basically good people and they're just living their own life, right? Even through the Palestine like Israel stuff, I really empathize with Ethan because I understood how hard it must have been, though controversial. And as an Arab myself, I understand how complicated it is. And I didn't like the virtue signaling I was getting from people either. Even I got a little petty with people. People, because I was like, you're being very virtue signaling about like pick sides, pick sides. Like, what are you talking about? So again, like I am able to see Ethan and understand like he's just a person having person reactions, but so is Jake. The dilemma is that Jake needs to understand just as Ethan has to understand sometimes our humaning isn't always the most rational or reasonable. And we just need to like 
have a moment with ourselves to figure it out. But it's not easy because we all have different values and cultural expectations and pressures on us. And so we're not all going to come to the same conclusions. That's why we have diversity, which is beautiful. That's why we're not all the same. We're not a monolith. Human beings aren't a monolith, right? Yeah. Is not. GP's up. You don't yeah, think I think Hila's right. I don't think Jake's a real fan. I think he's a clout shark who pretends to be fan fans of people so he can kind of get in good graces with them. That's I'm and that's not that's that's just some people are like that. That could be wrong. I just think a lot of people are like that. He watches the show. I watch the show. So this guy he, does not watch. Is he a fake <laughs> fan? Because like he calls in, he wears the merch, he's reached out to everybody. Fallen. He's just trying to get a job. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. maybe. I agree. I think Ela is 1000% on point. I agree with her 1000%. I think he's just trying to get a job. I don't think he's a fan. I think Ela's right. I think he's I think she's right. Maybe. In the weirdest way possible. <laughs> <laughs> bro, by the way, bro, it's not happening. You know, in <laughs> By the way, bro, not happy. That's what I'm saying. Ethan is like this kind of person coming into your work environment will ruin everything. They will ruin everything. It's true. And again, Jake's not a bad person, but he's obviously not ready. He's like he's got he's got to go to therapy or something. Um, but I think Ela's completely right. There's, I'm not hiring you. <laughs> yeah, just, that, damn. Just I, to be clear. <laughs> go ahead, Abby. On that note. You know, all the, the, like, I don't know, I do not get why so many people try to capitalize off talking shit about you. I mean, it works for some people, but, but ignoring me getting the job, and that's how initially you even heard about me was defending you. Even today, you were talking about a fan who put out mm -hmm. a nice video and right. you, gave him, you gave him praise and you, and you pinned it in the comments. Like, I don't, under, like, these people don't see you as a person. I've mm -hmm. always felt this way. They see you, like, I don't know if it's because you have. Well, they don't see him, they see Ethan as a villain. And they take the most bad faith approach to him. But to be fair, so does Ethan. I look, I like I said, I'm friends with Abba. Abba's a good person. I don't know him like in the most intimate of ways. But I, you know, we've hung out. I talk to him on occasion. Uh, most of it has been on stream. You guys have seen it. Except for our DMs. Like he's a very well-intentioned person. Abba's a very good person. He's warm and loving and he gets better with age. And I... When I see Ethan and Abba fight, it frustrates me because I'm like, hey, get along. But they can't get along because good people don't always get along. And I think they have a really hard time seeing each other sometimes. And that's the dilemma is because sometimes they're both bad faith. And sometimes Ethan is often more bad faith than Abba and Preach. Ethan doesn't always watch their videos. Even, Ab even AB and Dan, they're bad faith about Abba and Preach. They just are. Ab and Preach are very well-intentioned people and they've grown up a lot. Don't compare them to their videos seven years ago. How unfair. Like the person they are, the people they are now, they're very good men. And so again, like I don't, you know, I understand, but it's, you know, <sighs> you know, anyways. Colleen says, I wonder if Jake was envious of the pity Ethan received. I think being chronically ill since you're a kid can give you a complex. And unless you go to therapy to check that complex, you could end up suffering from it. Jake did give a little bit of the complex energy to me. I'm not a therapist. I don't know. But I kind of think that because Jake had been sick since he was a child, I do think he's got chronic kid complex syndrome i'm making that up i don't know what the, i'm just pulling that out of my ass but you know what i'm trying to say like i feel like he has that like syndrome some kids have like that complex around being sick for your whole life versus ethan and i like ethan by the way has tourette's right like ethan and i i have borderline i have like fibromyalgia i have ptsd like we've been sick but i got a diagnosed as an adult so i handled it a lot differently I haven't been sick my whole life. Well, I have been sick my whole life. I just didn't know I was sick versus Jake knew he was sick. So there's something to be said about having that relationship with your consciousness and not understanding that that it's happening. And I don't know how much therapy Jake has done recently to face that part of himself. Right. I, I just don't know. Money or fame or whatever it is, they think you don't have feelings, you don't have nothing and they want to attack you for absolutely anything. But this is by far the biggest fucking mm -hmm. miss I've ever seen. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. it's up, love there. You, baby. Once it's up again. there. And as a listener, I love the whole Lupus saga. It was such a funny arc. And the, for me, yeah. the best part at the end was when you guys are just like going on an online quiz. And yeah. the only thing you qualify for is the age. And we're like, That's, this is so funny. Listen to Ela. Listen to this. Hold on. Like, guys are just like going on an online quiz and the only thing you qualify for is the age and we're like that's 35. it you have it yeah 
It's like, okay, it's like, steamy. I don't know, it's man. It's obviously a joke. Did you hear that? They go take on the lupus quiz, and the only thing Ethan qualifies is the age. It's funny. Everybody relax. If you don't like it, don't watch it. You know what I mean? But I don't, I th- again, I think Jake's own video proved his point was wrong. Oh, which is such a rip as a content creator. What he thought he ate and all he did was choke. Oh, maybe he just doesn't have a sense of humor. Is that a condition? Yes. It might be. Yeah, I mean, it might be. <laughs> Some people take themselves too goddamn seriously. Let me tell you. <laughs> um, <sighs> yeah, I mean, if, if, I, if I was to diagnose him, <laughs> he's got chronic unfunny. <laughs> That's why you need to retire, bro. It's been a short career, and <laughs> let's just make keep it short. Acronym that Ethan pronounces Anna instead of ANA, like most every medical professional does. Mother. What? Ethan's a medical professional now. Exa- you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know. Ethan is not a medical professional. You're saying it's because I didn't say it correctly. I'm I'm lying about it. Like mm. I had. I this is what I don't like about being diagnosed with something because then people think you're like a professional in your own diagnosis when nope you're just a you're just an ill person people are always like Brittany can you teach me DBT no am I a therapist like they're like oh can you like help me with my fibro no am I a doctor I think people think because you're diagnosed with something and because people like Jake make content about chronic health that you're all of a sudden like a professional in it. I'm not a prof- I cannot do DBT with you. I cannot teach you how to take care of your fibro. Like, that's why I don't have a borderline channel. I'm not a DBT channel. I'm not a mental health channel. I'm a philosophy channel, right? Like, I'm a lifestyle channel because, again, the only thing I'm a professional in is myself. I talk about myself. That's what my channel is about, right? And I use other people to, like, bounce off and talk about my ideas about philosophy. But still, this idea that I think Ethan himself – thinks he's a medical professional is such a projection. Like, I don't even know if I'm using that word right. Because Jake is the one who's acting as if he's a medical professional. You know? I had never yeah. heard that phrase. Yeah. Now I know it's ANA. <laughs> I'm not a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> the Joe Rogan sound clips act so funny. And this 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 acting like he has all this innate medical knowledge. Like, mm. Bro, you Ugh. did this shit on Google too. Fucker. <laughs> this also adds to my claim of Ethan searching his labs and not hearing the results from an actual doctor due to the mispronunciation. I even read due you know to what? the mispronunciation. That is the most <laughs> unprofessional way to deduct a conclusion from a situation. So because you couldn't say it right, you didn't see actually see a doctor. It's insane. That's insane. Well, and the truth is, mm. Jake, um, most of my correspondence, which I read on the show, were with my doctors. Mm-hmm. So they wrote it out to me. Okay. And I read, I think I read all of my doctor messages, or at least most of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think also reading something not correctly is a condition. So, I have dyslexia. Yeah, it's dyslexia. Dyslexic queen. I'm pretty sure I have dyslexia and dyspraxia. I've got to go get tested because, like, it makes so much more sense. Like, but, like, relatable. Like, our ner- look at Ethan being our neurodivergent king, bro. Brady says, I'm going to college as a psychology major, and the amount of times I've had people come to me for psych eval is actually crazy. I'm nowhere near being qualified to do that. Literally. People are just go to a professional. Livy says, I've, and by the way, all professionals are also nuanced and not everyone's a good professional. Just because you're a doctor doesn't mean you're a good person. Levy says, I find people who do not take a nuanced approach towards other people odd. Like that balance between being opinionated as fuck and also understanding everyone is human with reason, yada, yada. Yeah, I think ultimately, I think people forget we're all coming from our own perspective. We're all coming from our own perspective. So, you have to understand like, okay, where, you know, where are they coming from? Why are they coming to those conclusions? And what's the information they have at hand? They have only the tools that they have. And so, yes, be angry, be upset through your own moral compass. But like, it's just about you. You know what I mean? And Discord says, Brittany, you got to get tested for dyslexia before Jake comes for your ass. <laughs> Like I said, I think I have it. Everybody relax. <laughs> no, I mean, he's trying to go super woke, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. It's yeah. like woke gone wrong. Yeah. And, um, and, Which and he- Ethan falls into that trap of woke gone wrong sometimes. He lacks nuance. It's just, it's bubbles, guys. We all, we all exist in bubbles. Whether it's our own making or somebody else has given you an idea to believe in. Meaning this could have been from anything. You like mayonnaise? Including asthma, allergies, the common cold, or even eczema. Keep eczema in mind throughout this video. He's so self-righteous. 
He's so so he's so unlikable. I'm so sorry, Jake. Oh, Papa bless, bro. You're just so unlikable. Which, to be fair, if you're on Jake's side and you feel like he is more likable than Ethan, cool. Go hang out with Jake. Fine. Oh, oh he's setting yeah. up a big dunk. <laughs> I feel it. I talked at great length to my doctors. An elevated ANA is is meaningful. In fact, I think one of my I think the doctor said it, or I read it. I don't remember, but no, my doctor said it. 15% of people with ANA, it's elevated, and they don't know why. They're not sick, but they're totally fine. But people with chronic elevated ANA tests, generally, the other 85 have an autoimmune issue. Mm. It can be elevated for when you get sick and stuff, as I understand it, but it goes back down. So I need to, they said, to get a meaningful test, I have to wait like a year. Mm -hmm. for to, to yeah, my doctor said the same thing. Yeah. See if it goes down or not. Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I love Dr. Doolittle. He's Dr. Doolittle. Right. Yeah. Motherfucker's an MD. Yeah, you know? I'm a doctor. Kind of works. <laughs> My levels are fucking insane. And the note says hom hom homogeneous and speckled exclamation. Pickles. Homogeneous and speckled is a motherfucker. You're going to tell me what's hom hom homogeneous <laughs> and speckled? You I dare it. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you gatekeep? illness How dare you? this dude doesn't even have lupus by the way yeah that's what like he doesn't even have lupus he has lyme disease which is like great love that sorry you have that but also i don't know i i don't yeah for somebody who works with in chronic health you would think that he'd be maybe he just doesn't deal with adults look someone agrees with jake and if you agree with jake and you understand his perspective and you feel like you relate to it cool like agree to disagree, I guess. But you know what I mean? There must be people that feel this way. And if there is, then cool. You're like in that category, right? He's got lupus glory. He's stealing all the lupus glory. Right. There's enough lupus glory in town for both of us, buddy. <laughs> I didn't know fallen fans actually physically fall and hit their head. <clears throat> oh. 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 Let's go. Nice. Got him. Let's go right. Let's go all right. Got him. Let's, all right. Now. <laughs> He's gonna make a video now about how he never hit his head. And you yeah, actually, Patty, that's so fair. Because Patty says Jake is diagnosed with chronic Lyme, uh, which is not widely accepted as a diagnosis in the medical community. Not a comment on the validity of his illness, but wondering if he has a complex around this. I actually wondered that as well because I, I was wondering about that. You know. Um, because yeah, when he said he had chronic Lyme disease, I was like, oh, is that a thing? Cause I didn't know that. And then I find out that it's not technically always considered a thing. And I find that fascinating. Cause I, I do wonder that as well, but how exhausting look as a person who has fibro, I get messages every day telling me it's a made up illness. I don't have it. There's no such thing because it's an invisible chronic issue. And I understand that. And it's incredibly painful. I don't know how to describe it to you. I know a lot of people in my audience also have fibro. It's a very unique lived experience. And I also thought I was going crazy because it didn't make sense why all of a sudden I would get sick. Now, I think it was obviously triggered because I got sick with um, COVID. But obviously, I understand that it's an invisible illness and people don't believe I have it. And it's not my job to listen to those people. I'm listening to my doctors. I was diagnosed. And I trust my doctors to have have properly diagnosed me. You know what I mean? And so I, I wonder if he does have a complex around his Lyme disease. Livy says, what's the difference between chronic Lyme and regular Lyme? I think it's because you can cure Lyme disease. Is that correct? Is that why it's not chronic? Because chronic involved like is a lifetime right it's like long time so i think that when you get lyme disease you are sick during that time but correct me if i'm wrong guys and then you're supposed to get medicine for the lyme disease and that's why it's not chronic is that correct or am i wrong i i don't know i'm not a, you know what i mean so i'm just trying to figure out if that's why there was a discrepancy from my understanding right um, so I'm not sure. B says he had everyone in his life apparently not believe him and call him a faker and cut his dad off. I don't know why I can't remember this. But yeah, he's talked about it being a major experience for him. Yeah, so I definitely recommend therapy if that's the case and definitely facing that relationship. You know what I mean? Like with yourself and your identity and your illness. Yes, homogeneous and speckled can mean a specific type of lupus. But there have also been many ANA test results that come back homogeneous and speckled where the diagnosis turned out to be eczema. Huh. 
Thanks, doctor, you fucking loser bitch. How dare you sit down and film this? How dare you? I'm having a serious medical thing, and I ha probably have to get a colonoscopy, and I probably do have some kind of autoimmune disease. And you scumbag are sitting here calling me a liar for what, dude? Why? Again, why did he do this? I just... It's befuddling. It's bedazzling. <laughs> My mind is bedazzled. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, just so you don't get worried. Okay. I wrote the doctor this morning. I was like, I'm super stressed out. Like, what's what's going on with these? And he just wrote me back. Yeah. And it makes me feel a little better. And actually, this morning, I had a conversation with Chad GPT that made me feel a little better, too. <laughs> oh, boy. A conversation? By the way, said in jest. Uh -huh. I said that knowing that it's silly. ChatGPT was like, it's probably not leukemia. Oh, good. It could be lupus, but I don't have enough. Reaching out to your doctor wow, after looking at lab results is exactly what they're there for. And the doctor said that there was nothing to worry about. No, but he said... <laughs> We have to wait for more results, bitch. Brother. Yeah. And a doctor who does, and my doctor was really great. She was amazing. She did reassure me constantly. She's like, I'm sure you're fine, but like, I'm a little concerned. I just want to get it as fast as possible, figure it out. You know what I mean? I don't think you, you dumb that. bitch. You but silly you, dumb bitch. Wow, you shared exactly what the doctor said and you were very transparent. What a liar. Right. Yeah, that's what I mean. How did Jake literally Ethan shared what the doctor said and then ran with his own anxiety, which is normal. And then Jake was like, see, Ethan's lying. Well, obviously he's not lying. He just, if he wanted to lie, he would have lied about what his doctor said. 100% transparent about everything. What a liar. You know who said it was probably not a big deal? Chat GPT. Maybe he's getting a little... Yeah, you should mm -hmm. crisscross there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the question is what video is Jake going to put out next after this? According to Ethan, ChatGPT made him feel better, saying it's not leukemia, but it could still be lupus? I put this to the test. When talking to ChatGPT with the same lab results, the chatbot consistently says, talk to your doctor and basically don't take anything it's saying as fact. You dumb bitch. But Ethan never did. The big joke about ChatGBT was that it's it's like a Ethan's like a anxiety loop. Like it's even Zach said, stop talking to ChatGBT. And Ethan's like, no, bro, no. You know, so obviously it, Ethan was looping about it, but nobody was taking it very seriously because it's ChatGBT, right? Bitch. Oh, my God. You don't. You're a fucking noob at ChatGBT. You don't have to use it like me, you moron. <laughs> <laughs> you silly dumb bitch. Mm -mm. Yeah, Here's what I did. That's this, like the basic way of using said, chat GPT. I said, Even I know that. I said, let's talk about a hypothetical patient. Duh. Here's his results, blah, 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 blah. Then you can have a real conversation about it. If you ask it to like help you with a diagnosis, I know that it will say that it can't do that. You silly, dumb, goofy, <laughs> fucking... He's probably using 3.5 as well. Such a dumb oh, moron. Oh, God. He probably Absolutely. is using 3.5. It's just because it's so bad faith, right? He no. absolutely would. It's hard for me not to get super pissed. But this, and again, <laughs> it's important to remember, he kept this up all month. Yeah. Till today. Yeah, Livy says, obviously, he's making a joke about his health anxiety, which we all do. Exactly. Now, maybe we don't, though. Some people are not like this. And some people like um, aren't some people aren't like this. And so I think they just can't relate. They just can't relate to it. But because some of us feel like we all do this, it's not really every person on the planet does this. But if you're in the category of people who do this, it feels relatable and humanizing and validating and wonderful. But if you're not a person who does this, you're just like not relating. I've done that with people. I've been very much like, why is this person crying on the internet? And then if I think back and I related to somebody else in my life and not myself, I'm like, oh, if this happened to my friend, I'd be upset for her because if she, if this happened to her, she'd be upset. But if it happened to me, I wouldn't be upset. So again, sometimes you have to remember when people are upset on the internet and you're not understanding why they're upset, it's because you're not that kind of person. So it's again, instead of moralizing it, Instead of just, but you should be able to defend yourself. You should be able to call someone a little bitch for being a little bitch. But at the same time, no, like it's not hateful. Ethan doesn't want anything bad to happen to Jake. He just, he has the right to defend himself. Jake made a very inappropriate assumption and target on Ethan's back. And Jake came for war and he just pussied out, bro. So Ethan has the right to defend himself. The idea that you can't be somebody like who, you know, becomes a little petty 
you know, I just think like, you, why are people trying to take the high road here? You know what I mean? Like Jake certainly didn't. Oh, and just like Ethan, I also forgot to mention it affects 90% women being two to three times. Ethan is a woman. I stand by this. More prevalent. We have oh, mentioned that lying. so many times. So there many times. Are, he's obviously lying. This is a girly disease. This is for the girl. <laughs> this is a girly disease. Yeah, um, Jake comes off too white nighty. I hate men that pedestal women. I hate women that pedestal men. We're not, not no one belongs on a pedestal. Girls only. We every time we talked about it, we talked about the it fact was, that huh? it's mostly women. Lupus is like, hi girl. <laughs> I see you, girl. It was also you, misogynistic of you to think you yeah, name calling. Jake just shows why we sh uh, one should not take Ethan seriously. Like, let Ethan be a comedian. K Strong says Ethan is for the girls. He is. He's for the girlies. One thousand. You have it. True. <laughs> women. I was doing. You're women. By the way, a lot more women get diagnosed with borderline than men. It doesn't mean men don't have borderline. Remember that men in a lot of places around the world struggle going to the doctor because of toxic masculinity. So remember. Lots of men might li be living with lupus and might not be getting diagnosed or lots of men have borderline and are not getting diagnosed. So only those who have gotten diagnosed and mo more women go to the doctor than men are getting diagnosed. So remember to encourage your males in your life to go to the doctor because we love them and they might hesitate to go. That's why my husband says I'm a man all the time because I always hesitate to go to the doctor. It takes a lot of work to get me to the doctor, which he helped me with last year when I was getting my diagnosis with rheumatology. My partner spent New Year's Eve helping me fill out my paperwork to go to the doctor because I'm a man and I suffer from toxic masculinity. <laughs> Lori, <laughs> yeah, you're man spreading. You're stealing the lupus valor from the girlies. Oh, yeah. that's not right. Yeah. That's not right. That's not right. No, that's fucked up. <laughs> Among African American, Hispanic oh. slash Latina, Asian American, oh, you're racist, American, too, dude. Oh, no. and other Pacific oh, Islander no. women, then among no. the eight women. With all that being said, now that you know a little bit about what lupus is, let's go back to someone who admittedly doesn't know what lupus is. I don't even know what the fuck lupus is. Oh right. wow! Yeah. yeah. So you said Got it. Him. Checkmate. What a liar! <laughs> Here I am being super transparent and upfront about everything. Lupus uh, symptoms. I wasn't really. I'll take lupus over fucking uh, cancer. Lupus symptoms includes um, muscle and joint pain. No fever. No rashes. Sometimes nice they get on my face, but Thank it's been gone for a while. Jokes. Chest pain. No hair loss. I mean, look at me. Sun or light sensitivity. No kidney problems. Mouth sores, prolonged or extreme fatigue. Anemia. I don't have anemia in the blood yeah. test. Memory problems. Oh, weird. I have no symptoms. Wow. Because so ChatGPT is like because you have no symptoms, like leukemia and lupus usually are accompanied with symptoms. Then it's hard for me to. So what say. Me, that's crazy. Ela, that's a phenomenal question to ask. You know, don't don't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, you was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> this don't talk to me. You was so funny in this one, man. She's killing it, right? Dumb idiot, <laughs> masquerading oh, oh. as a medical professional while criticizing me for the same thing. If you know anything about lupus, dummy, the one thing that I've heard over and over again through this journey from people with lupus is that it takes a really long time to get a diagnosis because it's a strange illness. It manifests in all kinds of different ways, and it's extremely difficult to get that diagnosis. Most people, it takes them years and years to get the official lupus diagnosis, you scumbag loser. Yeah, actually, um, first says lying about illness for money and sympathy is serious career-ending allegations. Good for Ethan to have a laugh at someone who could have caused him his reputation. Guys, it's a very serious thing to scam people out of money for an illness you've never had. And that's not what Ethan is doing. And so for Jake to make those allegations is very serious. I think Jake authentically probably thought he was right, but he was so off the mark. And that's why Ethan does need to defend himself. Because remember, like, have if this was real, could you imagine how upsetting would that be if somebody was scamming people out of money for an illness they didn't have? It's a horrible thing. It's a very, but that's, you know, again, through our own morals and values, we can judge this behavior. I would. I certainly think it's very, very wrong to do that. And so I would be incredibly disappointed in Ethan if he did that. Look, I would come down on Ethan if I thought that's what he was doing. But it's very hard to see that that's, that that's just so not what he's doing. I would feel I would have made the greatest cancel Ethan video if I genuinely thought Ethan was scamming people out of money for an illness he didn't have. But that's obviously not what's happening, right? It's just so mean. 
And yeah, bro, I guess I know. Bro, it's more personal for you because it's about you. I guess. Yeah. To me, it's just like it's so utterly it's embarrassing so in like a funny way. But, but for you, like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is your life, and you you are ill with something, and you're Listen. trying to figure it out. And it's yeah. like. An open book, ex you can see, it says everything. It says, I don't know what lupus is. I don't even have the symptoms. I'm just nervous about this thing that's happening. And it's like, it's crazy. I wasn't like, <coughs> <coughs> I'm so sick. Can I get donations, please? Right. <laughs> oh, my God. The thing is, like, you put this out at 125,000 views. It wasn't all hate. You had, like, five or 10,000 likes. So there is people on the Internet that watch this fucking video and... Believed what you said in your so-called apology. You said I apologize to everyone. Well, who are you apologizing to and for mm -hmm. what dummy? Yeah, I can weird that Jake sent out like uh, why didn't he apologize to Ethan? According to Ethan, in the past, he has had lab results where his white blood cell count was elevated, which I believe is connected to his GERD diagnosis because well. Wow, thanks doctor. Wow, Jake's the doctor now. Look at him. I think that's connected to his GERD. It's like, sir, Ethan didn't ask you to give him an assessment. I mean, don't get me wrong. On the internet, we're always like evaluating and observing people and giving our opinions about why they do things, myself included. And maybe that's true. But maybe if he was trying to help Ethan, but he's obviously like trying to prove Ethan is lying by going over his own medical history. Like super cringe, bro. Okay, oh doctor. Oh my god. <laughs> Who cares what you believe, dog? How the fuck? Who are you? you? You're gatekeeping medical shit, saying don't diagnose yourself, and you're sitting here <laughs> pretending to be a fuck. That's the problem. The problem is that he had the, like, yes, the, ner the nerve, exactly the nerve, to literally do that. Like, sir, you can't sit on a, a throne of virtue signaling and then be like, Ethan doesn't have the right to guess about his own medical history, but you have the right to guess? Man? Fucking doctor. Yeah. I have asked my doctors that question. You dumb fuck! <laughs> and every time they go, There's, they wouldn't be related. You scumbag. <laughs> you bitch. You loser. You fucking bitch. <laughs> Stop making YouTube videos forever. <laughs> Stop. You know, it's silly. It's very, it's like... It, it, it's like he doesn't get it. And Jake, if you want to call me in private, I'll talk to you. I'll give you all the love and support you need. I will explain this to you. I'm not being condescending. But like, sir, I will. I mean, maybe I'm being a little condescending. But like, come on. You can't literally sit here, make a whole hit piece on Ethan about Ethan's own anxiety and guessing around his own medical history. And then be like, I think it's related to his GERD. And I'm like, the audacity, the white male audacity. I'm sorry. It's such a white man move. I'm gonna I'm gonna be a little racist about it. It's such a white man move, bruh. It's such like a. I can't believe he just did. He just mansplain to Ethan, like, and then do this, ma'am. Also, something Jake does. I'm sorry. It just remind me of James Charles because I think that was James Charles' voice. Why does he say "Hey, sisters"? Did you guys see that on Jake's Jake's like opener on his channel is "Hey, sisters"? It's like I swear to God, he copies everybody. Did he copy James Charles and say, I've never heard anyone say, hey, sisters, except James Charles. And maybe that's just my bubble, but I've never heard that. So I go on Jake's channel and that's why he comes off. That's why Ela has a good intuition about him. He comes off super like, I don't want to use the S word, but he reminds me a little bit of my stalker. Just a little bit of my stalker. I'm, I'm putting this out here in the universe, but I don't mean to because I'm sure Jake's a nice person. But he reminds me a little bit of my stalker. Like he pretends he's sick with things he's not sick with. Not that I'm saying Jake is lying about his medical history, but I don't know. And then he like copies other people. He tries to become friends with people. He tries to get, he tries to sneak into people's lives and become intimate with them. Like it was just like a little strange. So I don't know why Jake says, hey sisters, but I'm like, oh, he hates James. It's just a meme. I would never want to be associated with James Charles, even as a meme. What? Why would he associate himself with James Charles? He flirts with children. Like, why would he want to be associated with him? I think James made fun of, I think Jake made fun of James. So I think he's doing it ironically. Oh, that's so like, it's not coming across ironically to me. I'm a new viewer though. You know what I mean? Like, that's so weird. Why would he do that? Leah says, I was watching his tearless video of his and he says he knows iDubs, doubt. It sounds like he's like, look, I've known a lot of people in the industry, but I don't like, I'm not in contact with them like that. Like, of course you meet people as a YouTuber. 
but it's not like I'm friends with everybody. I just know people, but it doesn't matter. Like, it's not like they'll answer your DMs just because you know them or you saw them at a lunch dinner or something. You know what I mean? Sometimes I think he talks it up. Like, he knows people more than he does or, yeah, I don't know why he'd want to be associated with him. He hates Shane, James, and Jeffrey, so it's definitely ironic. Weird. Yeah, why would he try to use that? I To a new viewer, it sounds like he's paying homage, I guess. B says he calls him a pedo like he wants him erased off the internet type vibe. So he was going to take it anyways. Okay, weird. Okay. Um, yeah, weird. Weird choice. Uh, weird branding. Weird branding decision. But okay, you do you. <coughs> you would be Get in there. Do little. Mix that's, it up. That's so good. Can't, can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, medical school is hard and he doesn't seem very bright. Mm. No offense. All offense, full offense. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this dude basically invited the rat. rat. Like I, I can say pretty much anything I want about you, dummy bitch. <laughs> After you accuse me of this shit, loser. Uh, boy. Also, oh, later boy. in this video, his doctor says it is. Also, saying that you're not a hypochondriac and then following it up with this is wild. Well, the good news is if I do have cancer, because I was not, I'm not symptomatic at all. So if I do, we caught it, I guess, early, as earlier than I would have if I started having symptoms. You know what I mean? Absolutely. But I don't. I, I think this whole, this idea of cancer seems unlikely based on what ChatGPT told me, and uh, the doctor told me not to worry. So I'm trusting him on that one. But if you look up all the ones that I'm abnormal for, it all is like you have leukemia or lupus that's google baby that's why they say don't google it you'll just come up with like the worst illnesses but that's you know i'll take lupus any day bro hit me with that loop true hit me with that lupus over cancer bro. Lupus. hit me with that lupus okay i'm being so <laughs> silly in this. Yeah. <laughs> obviously the premise of choosing one illness over another is silly and absurd but right. go ahead and explain why not really though come on we all know things we'd rather have than other things wouldn't you rather have a cold than the flu? Wouldn't you rather have the cold than COVID? Wouldn't you rather have like, hello? That's why, you know, if you have, there's just like a difference to your life. Like quality is just different. I'm grateful every day I have borderline. I know other things would have been a lot more hard to handle. You know what I mean? Jokes aren't funny. It's <laughs> not only undermines people who have lupus. You know what undermines oh, people, you bitch! <laughs> is sitting there pretending to be a doctor gatekeeping uh, lupus. You don't even have lupus. <laughs> who the fuck are you? <laughs> uh, Stock says Jake is an annoying teacher's pet that at recess tries to hang with the cool kids. Yeah, Randall from Recess Vibes. Yeah, ap yeah. Which look, why? Do, what do I say? In order to be a whole human being, right? This channel is about philosophy and introspection. Links in the description for my levels video. And there's nothing wrong with being a two or a five, but the whole point is like you're following your joy and you're having a good relationship with yourself. You're becoming a whole human being. And the last thing is recognizing who you are. What's your trope? Who are you in the story? If you find yourself being the Randall, maybe ask yourself like, ooh, do I want to be this person? If you find yourself being the villain in the story, ask yourself, is that who you meant to be? And do you want to be someone different? If you find yourself being a character in the story, like if you find yourself watching an anime or watching TV or watching a documentary and being like, I kind of identify with this person, ask yourself, is that who like you want to be? And then if you don't trick yourself into thinking you're someone you're not as well, right? You have to be introspective. But the dilemma, again, is that it's very difficult to face ourselves. I don't think 90% of the population is going to be interested in doing that. I think they do it on a spectrum. As per usual, everything's on a spectrum. But to truly understand yourself is a lifelong journey that's very complicated. And it's very emotionally exhausting. You're doing constant emotional labor for yourself. So I don't know if Jake is ready to go on any any part of that journey right now but even if he just did it by like five percent i think he'd see an increase of joy in his life or at least happiness because happiness is an emotion it's fluid but he could get closer to his joy right maybe <laughs> his experiences but also makes it seem like a lupus diagnosis is an easy thing to come by also he oh you know that said the idea of cancer seems unlikely based on what chat gpt told him but he follows up by saying according to chat gpt he has leukemia or lupus <laughs> this idea of cancer seems unlikely based on oh. what chat gpt told me but if you look up all the ones that i'm abnormal for it all is like you have leukemia we just watch or this lupus. clip yeah. oh, someone that, it also suggested schurgen syndrome the chat gpt suggested that but i don't know what the fuck that is. These chronic illnesses like Sjogren's syndrome that Ethan keeps thinking he has are predominantly in women, which he fails well, to- Well, that doesn't mean not in men. You know what I mean? 
to mention multiple times. Men have it, dumb fuck. <laughs> just because it's predominantly women does it, men get it. You just said it. Men get these diseases. Mm. It's such an idiotic thing to say. Like, how could you utter that mm. and not stop yourself? Yeah. Well, it's mostly women that get lupus, so I don't even know why you would even fucking lie about it. What? Times. According to Johns Hopkins, most people who are diagnosed with Sjogren's syndrome are 40. I didn't say I had that shit. I said it seems like I don't have that shit. Yeah, like Ethan's literally in Jake's own video proving over and over and over again that he's not saying he has it. He's saying he thinks he has it. I don't understand why Jake can't see the difference. But then again, if you identify with Jake and his perspective and you genuinely can't tell the difference, maybe maybe question why that is. Because there were a few people I saw taking Jake's side. I don't know why you can't read the room and you can't tell that Ethan's not saying he has lupus. Like, I don't know what's going on, but that's like a you problem. You got to figure it the fuck out, okay? Like, obviously, Ethan's joking. He's worried, but he's not sure, and he's guessing. But Ethan isn't making any definitive claims outside of his own worry. He's allowed to say, I think it's lupus. I'm pretty sure it's lupus. He's allowed to have that verbalization out loud. We all are allowed to say, babe, I think it's cancer. I think it's cancer, and I'm freaking out. And you're allowed to say, babe, let's go to the doctor and really try to figure out if it's cancer, right? Like, you're allowed to say that. The idea that he's not allowed to say it is such a weird fucking take. So if you're a person who's on Jake's side, not that you need to take a side, just remember that people are allowed to have fears. They're allowed to voice those fears. They're allowed to voice those concerns. They're allowed to say out loud to their audience of thousands of people, I think I'm sick and, I, and I'm scared. And then they're allowed to also find out they're not sick. And it's still morally okay. In my opinion, Ethan's doing nothing wrong. And if you think he's doing something wrong, cool. Difference of values. And older and women are as much as 10 times more likely to develop it than men. Therefore, I'm not men saying it's impossible to be <laughs> diagnosed with it as a man, but you would think that if Ethan did any amount of research or spoke to a doctor instead Holy of ChatGPT, his worries would be lessened. Also, Holy with shit, dude. It, were you not listening? He was reading a message from the doctor. That's the weird part about it is like... Are you listening to your own video? Uh, this, it's, uh, it's this fall in fanitis. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a ment it's a brain disease. <laughs> Zero symptoms. His likelihood of having any of these things is so much smaller. Oh God! Why does my he keep saying? I just think people think really badly of people, and they don't recognize, like you know, we don't have to be the same, right? Like we don't have to have the same opinions. We have different lived experiences. I just think people think so badly of people sometimes, but then that always looks different, right? Again, it's hard for me to see Jake in good faith, other than he probably genuinely believes what he's saying is true. But even after all the evidence, again. His own, his own video proved his own point wrong. So I hope Jake comes out and apologizes. I hope he says, hey, after reviewing this and hearing the feedback, it's obvious that I heard Ethan wrong. I heard him in bad faith. I'm so sorry. Obviously, like, that wasn't my intention. And now I feel so embarrassed or so silly or so whatever he feels. And I will try not to do this in the future. Because look, we're human. We all make mistakes. We mishear people. I do it all the time. You guys know on stream, I don't pre-watch things. I'm learning along with you. I mishear things. I rely on you to tell me when I mishear things. I'm not perfect. I'm not asking you to be perfect. But Jake is in some ways asking Ethan to be perfect in a way that is so wrong. But then again, he's accusing Ethan of being malicious, intentionally malicious. And to accuse Ethan of being intentionally malicious is so far off the mark. It seems like he's mentally unwell. And I think it probably is a part of his trauma in relation to be chronically in relation to be chronically ill. So I would recommend that he like goes to a therapist for that, right? Because totally fair. You know what I mean? It's like totally fair. Okay, so I'm I'm trying to give Jake an out. I'm trying to give him an opportunity to say, my bad. And so we can all move on from this. But if he keeps doubling down, it also could be an indication that he's sick, right? But then at the same time, I I don't know if that's true. So assuming he's sick is also taking away his agency in some ways. So then I have to assume he's not sick and then he's the one who's maliciously lying. Because what is it? Is Jake maliciously lying? 
it feels malicious, but maybe it's not malicious. And so that's, you know, we can't read people's minds. So we have to make really educated guests on our own lived experience and what we know of people. And what I know of Ethan is like, he's not maliciously, like intentionally malicious. So, okay. And then um, Jake, I don't know him very well, right? But from my understanding, um, some people like to say he's a negative clout farmer, but he obviously seems um, too virtue signaling for me, but he could really believe what he's saying. So I'll give, again, I'll give him a way out. I'll give him time to think about it and apologize or double down and say, no, actually, based off everything I've seen, I still believe this. Okay. Cool. Great. Agree to disagree. Passed away from symptoms. lupus for their yeah. of being diagnosed. I don't know. Because he's lying. He yeah. just keeps saying that. He's lying. Yeah. It doesn't make it true. You did have symptoms. Mm -hmm. That's I why you got checked out at the doctor. Yeah. He's just lying. Okay. I mean, he even says at one point, I did hundreds of hours of research. It's like, okay, good. <laughs> so then you know you're alive. What were you watching, dude? Don't oh. say that. Mm. Block her. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry to hear that. Mute her, I'm please. I'm sorry to hear that. What the hell? I'm sorry, Sarah. I didn't know it was that serious. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's serious. Because well, when I read about lupus, it said, like, I guess, like, 90% of the people survive, which is... Oops. Not, I know, great, but it's not cancer. It's, it's not cancer, yeah, and it's treatable. It says people who get it, who get it treated, can live a normal like lifespan. I mean, yeah, lupus is treatable. And when I thought I had lupus, everyone was like, "Relax, my mom has lupus, my sister has lupus, my friend has lupus, you'll be fine." I was still freaking out, and I didn't end up having lupus, obviously, but I was getting a lot of reassurance from people not to freak out because it's not the end of the world, but also you might need a surgery, you might need a transplant, you might need a lot of things, you can't live the same. So it's like kind of finding balance between not freaking out and also understanding that it's serious, but not freaking out, but also it's serious and you could die. In some situations. Not that we're not all gonna die, P.S. Just in case you guys don't know, we're all gonna die. It's just a matter of when and how, right? Yes, and Ethan's wealth would make the process much easier. I do recommend meditating on your death and coming to a radical acceptance in a philosophy sense relationship with the fact that you will die. Just, you know, because a lot of people don't prepare themselves. I'm a Syrian and in my culture, death is a part of life. You know, I was raised Catholic, so you kind of prepare for death. But I know a lot of people don't do that. I think Jake probably doesn't do that. And so I think he's ultra sensitive to it. But newsflash, you will die. Easier. But okay, so oh, I have money okay. for medical. You fucking rich yeah. bitch. <gasps> Patty says legit listening to Ethan talk about his health issues pushed me to get my chronic pain looked at, and I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia. Messy King did me a solid F fucking fire, bro. That's great, bro. That's a great story right there, baby. Good for that. See, that's what I'm saying. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> fucking got you, dude. Motherfucker. <laughs> Of course, he does. I believe he doesn't mention at all during this video that throughout this whole thing, I was donating a lot of money to people for their medical bills, specifically nice because you, right. I was like, I feel bad because this stuff is expensive and it's not mm -hmm. prohibitive to me where it would be to a lot of people. Yeah, Jake didn't mention that, that Ethan was donating to people and helping them with their medical bills. Hmm. That's why it feels malicious. Because he left out the part of it that allowed Ethan that thousand dollars that Jake was like, Ethan made a thousand dollars off his fans. Okay. Ethan donated more than that. So what are you doing? That's why it feels malicious. The reason people aren't on Jake's side is because it feels like if you did all this research, why didn't you include that in the video? I'm sorry that Jake is suffering, but it feels self inflicted. It feels really malicious to do that. And then to post the video and to feel self-righteous about it. And then only to take down the video because you were being held accountable for the lies that you told. You know, I don't know what he expected to happen. And my head in Miller found it. My belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine. Yet all I do is whine. Not to you in my mind.
Da da da.